Hello IBS and welcome to the wonderful world of the male reproductive system. Now I can see some of you squirming and you're all frightened and you're thinking, oh my lord, why do I have to learn this? Don't be scared. It's all we're going to talk about is the actual um, anatomy. We're going to talk about the um, hormones involved. We're not going to talk about sex. We're not going to talk about the mechanics of any of that. We're just looking at the reproductive system, the male reproductive system today, and the anatomy of it. So don't be shy. Okay, so let's look at the parts first of all. Now, I know you're looking at this diagram of the side view of the male reproductive system, and you're probably just thinking, oh my lord, there's so many different labels. How am I ever going to remember how to do this? Well, the first thing is we want to start with the journey. If you think of it as a story, as a journey, then it makes the labeling so much easier and you can understand what's going on. So imagine that the sperm start off here, okay, and this is called uh, the testes, okay. Now, if you have two, you would refer to both of them as testes, but we're talking about one here, so testy. And the sperm leave the testy, they travel up this tube. Okay, as you can see, they go all the way. It's a long, 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 long tube. They'll circle round. They'll keep going round, around, 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 until eventually they are ejaculated or expelled from the body here. So we're going to follow this through this diagram, okay, from the journey or from the perspective of the sperm. So the testy is enclosed or kept in a skin sac. And this skin sac is called the scrotum, and it hangs outside the body. The reason it's outside the body is because sperm like the temperature to be cooler than body temperature, hence them hanging outside the body. Now, the sperm are made in the testy, and they mature, okay, to, f um, to fully functioning sperm in this part here, which is called the epididymis. Once a sperm are mature, or they are ready to be ejaculated, then what happens is they will leave the epididymis and they will travel up this long, long tube. And this tube, for the moment, is called the vas deferens, or the sperm duct. Um, and so they will travel up and around, just sperm, until they get to or encounter this first gland. And this is called the seminal vesicle. Uh, the seminal vesicle as a sugary substance to the sperm. And why it does this is if you've got to think about what does a sperm do, it goes on this very long journey where it's going to get to the vagina and then it's going to swim like crazy to try and meet an egg. Now sperm have tails as you know, and these tails need energy to move, they need ATP. So in order to power them, the seminal vesicle will um, provide a fluid which is rich in sugars and simple sugars so in other words food for the journey okay it's packing a lunch so that's the job of the seminal vesicle um, just past the seminal vesicle you'll notice there's this other tube that's feeding in to our bus deferens and here this is called as you know the bladder and if the bladder's there then it's going to contain urine so urine can also travel down the tube from this point onwards, which could be a problem, except for sperm and urine never travel through the tube at the same time. Okay, so when ejaculation is happening, urine cannot be passed. So let's keep from our sperm. So we've just gone past the seminal vesicle. We've just picked up our lunch, if you like. The next gland that we're going to look at is the prostate gland. And this is the one that most people know about. Uh, because people get prostate exams. The prostate gland, this one's important because it adds an alkaline solution or a basic solution, so a solution that has a pH of greater than seven to our um, sugary solution that we have already and the sperm. The reason for this is twofold. Firstly, um, because the urine has been passing and is gonna be passing down this tube prior to um, ejaculation, then what happens is the urine is a little bit acidic, so this um, alkaline solution will neutralize that so that the sperm um, aren't attacked by the acid and therefore killed. Okay. 
So that's the first reason. The second reason is when the sperm reach the vagina, the vagina is extremely acidic. Okay, it's a pretty hostile environment for sperm. So if they were just to get there without any, um, just in a regular neutral solution, then what would happen is they would be killed, they'd be destroyed by the, uh, the acidic conditions. So the prostate gland adds this basic or alkaline solution so that when they reach the vagina, the um, acidic conditions are neutralized, which means that we've got a higher survival rate of our sperm. So they travel down here, now they have this sugary solution, their pat lunch, and they've got the um, alkaline solution to help prevent uh, being destroyed by the acid in the um, vagina. The third gland that we're going to look at is called Cowper's gland. And Cowper's gland just adds a lubricant, helps things flow a little bit smoother. Okay, and it flushes out any residual urine that may still be left in the tube. Now this tube at this point has changed its name. It's no longer the vas deferens, because vas deferens only contain or carry sperm. At this point, this tube can carry sperm or urine. So at this point, it's called the urethra. And in gentlemen, or in guys, the urethra is pretty long. Ladies, our urethra is pretty short, but for guys, pretty long. So the sperm will go along its journey, and when it gets to here, it enters the penis, okay? And the penis is a, an external organ, so it's outside the body, and it has this special tissue here. And this special tissue is called erectile tissue. And it's special because it can become engorged or filled with blood. And when it becomes filled with blood, the penis becomes erect or hard, which is essential for copulation, for having sex. So it has this erectile tissue here. It also, though, has spongy tissue. So it's not just all erectile tissue, we do have spongy tissue as well. Uh, the end of the penis can be covered in foreskin, which is a protective layer of skin to protect the head of the penis. Uh, up here, we have the pubic bone, and then the final parts, which aren't really parts of the reproductive system, but they are part of the anatomy of this region. We have the anus, and above the anus, the tube, or um, it's a bit bigger than the tube, but the passageway, shall we say, is called the rectum. Uh, the rectum is where poop is stored before being expelled. So let's think of this again quickly. We start off in the testes, the sperm matures in the epididymis, and then is ejaculated or it is released up this tube called the vas deferens. It passes round. It encounters the seminal vesicle first, which adds a sugar solution. It passes through the pros or the prostate gland, excretes um, the alkaline solution in there to help um, neutralize any urine and neutralize the acidic conditions in the vagina. We then pass the Cowper's gland, which helps provide a lubricant to flush out any residual urine and help the sperm on their way. We now are in the urethra, and we're passing through the penis, which has special erectile tissue that can become engorged, making the penis become firm and hard and therefore capable of uh, copulation. Um, and then it passes out of the penis at the end here. Okay, so this is the male reproductive parts. Okay, so let's talk about what they do again. So, the testes. Their job is where testosterone, the male hormone, is secreted. Okay, so this is where testosterone is made. Um, and this is also where the sperm are produced. So spermatogenesis, the production of sperm, happens in the testes. Uh, the collecting ducts are just these little ducts that are outside the testes before the epididymis, and they just transport sperm to the epididymis. If you recall, the epididymis is where the sperm become mature. Okay, they get ready to um, go on their long journey. Um, and the epididymis is the beginning of the sperm's uh, transportation during ejaculation. The vas deferens is the sperm duct, and this is um, from the testes before we get to the, val uh, the glands, and this is just for transporting the sperm. Seminal vesicle. It's an exocrine gland, which means that it excretes a chemical to the outside of the body, not into the bloodstream. So it 
secretes a fluid that contains the sugars, remember, to power the sperm on their long journey. The prostate gland, okay, this is um, where we get that alkaline solution to neutralize any urine and to neutralize the hostile acidic environment in the vagina. Carpus gland is just a um, lubricant. Uh, it lubricates away and flushes out any urine that may be left over. The urethra, uh, all this part now, so from here on out is the urethra, this long tube, um, and it's just a passageway, okay? It's where the sperm or urine, depending on you know, what process is happening, um, travels out the body. And then finally at the bottom, we have the penis. So this part really, uh, the urethra onwards, this is the penis, and it contains that special erectile tissue that can help with copulation. So what are the roles of testosterone, our male hormone? Okay, well there's four distinct roles for it, um, and they happen at different times during um, a man's life. So prenatally, this means it happens in womb, okay, in utero, before the baby is born. And so here, um, when a baby is still developing, testosterone is secreted from embryonic testes at about eight weeks. And this will happen, what happens is it promotes the development of the male genitalia. So it basically um, makes sure that the fetus becomes a male. And then after being born and up until puberty, testosterone is at pretty low levels, not really doing much. However, as you well know, during puberty, all bets are off, okay? Testosterone levels increase significantly and we got all these secondary sexual characteristics. Uh, things like voices getting be uh, deeper, breaking, that sort of thing, Adam's apple development, um, pubic, facial and body hair, just hair everywhere. Um, bones grow so you get taller, muscle growth, the whole nine yards, okay? So that's all happening during puberty and that's happening due to uh, raising levels or higher levels of testosterone, which again, remember, testosterone is made in the testes. At the same time, and then continuing for the rest of a man's life, um, testosterone also stimulates sperm production. So that's one of its ongoing roles. And another role from puberty and beyond is testosterone um, maintains sexual drive so it maintains a, a man's desire to have sex. In other words, a man's libido. So they're the four roles of testosterone. Now, just as an aside, we touched on this a little bit, but on the Y chromosome, there is a sex determining region, okay? And it's found on the Y chromosome. And uh, this is where sex is determined. So that's why the Y chromosome um, determines whether you're going to be a boy or not. Uh, and what happens is a protein is produced from it that acts as a transcription factor, which basically means it binds to spe specific parts of DNA and helps control um, the activity of those genes. And what happens is this protein causes a fetus be to get male gonads, okay, testes. It also, though, prevents the um, development of female structures such as uterus and the oviducts or fallopian tubes. And all this happens, this testes development happens around about eight weeks of gestation. So uh, this testosterone kicks all this off. So what are the two views? So when you look at uh, the male reproductive system, we looked at it on a side view, okay? However, obviously there's another view that you can see. So let's look at what we've got. So if we look at the top here, Okay, so let's follow it round. So we have our uh, testes. So we follow around the first, or the, not the first, but the second gland is the prostate gland. Okay, so what's next? This one here. So let's follow it around. So we've got the testes. We follow around the oh the tube. This one is the vas deferens. Okay, this part here, ooh, pretty easy the penis. Let's see. Oh, what's a tube called that's after all the glands, after the bladder, and that goes through the penis? Oh, that one is the urethra. Okay, 
let's see this one here okay so the spherical organ that makes uh, the sperm okay that would be the testes and there's two of them so testes uh, what's the testes um, contained in well they're contained in the scrotum and then finally on this diagram here you can see it's pointing to uh, the outer part of the testes which is the epididymis okay well I'm afraid to say that's all folks hope you enjoyed it